taking a look yeah. at some of the posit positivity that we've been seeing when it comes to the local currency. Where to from here? Because at the end of the day, we're seeing commodity prices increasing and we're also seeing some strong flows coming into those commodity stocks. Yes, definitely. I think people are coming to, to get a commodities also for inflation hedge. If inflation does start to move up, you want to be holding uh, uh, commodities and, 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 and real uh, uh, real assets, so people are coming in for the commodities. Uh, and secondly, they're also coming into our bonds, and they're coming into our bonds as well because they're still getting a yield from them. Um, if you take a look at uh, US uh, two-year treasuries, the yield that you're getting there is so minimal at the moment. So uh, both of those flows coming into the, uh, the commodities and as well as coming into our bond market, keeping the rand very firm. Rob, we've also seen, uh, in a way, a lack of direction when it comes to, to the equity markets, especially when you take a look at what's happening in the US and the UK. When do you see, start seeing that subsiding? given the fact that we've been seeing a lot of flows coming into the bond market and perhaps investors have to start being a little bit more bullish and perhaps taking a little bit more risk on and moving into other asset classes. Yes, equities have been trading in quite a broad range. If you take a look at the top 40 index, it's about 23,000 to 26,000. And as we come back down to the bottom of that range, you start to see some buying. Um, but to push us through um, 26,000 and onwards, and on the S&P, it's, it's about, uh, I think it's 11.33 if we have to get through there as well. On the Dow, it's about, uh, um, uh, also around those levels are about uh, 11,000 or 10,700 actually. Um, to get through that, you need unemployment to come down, and that's really what you're looking for. You're looking for employment to come down and companies that are starting to show some profits to start hiring people. So it's difficult to break through that trend without uh, employment um, increasing. Well, Rob, it's quite an interesting notion because we keep hearing that it's going to be a jobless recovery. Unemployment relatively sticky in the US, 9.5% here in South Africa. We're sitting at over 25% unemployment in the likes of the Eurozone. We've got 10% unemployment. So uh, a big problem all round. And unfortunately, unemployment is going to be one of those things that's going to stick with us for around two years or so. So do you think that equities could perhaps streamline from here onwards? Well, there's a, there is a possibility and a risk that we're just going to plateau at these levels and trade in a very tight range of about a thousand, a, th a few thousand points. Uh, so it is something that uh, we're looking at closely and it's, uh, and it's difficult uh, to invest and make money in a, in a market that just trades flat over, over a certain range. So, um, you know, there is injections and stimulus packages that might need to put back into the market again to stimulate that market to get employment, uh, unemployment numbers down. Uh, just looking at some of the uh, the most attractive uh, resources in South Africa at this point in time, of course, gold being one of them. We've been seeing gold increasing quite a bit in value, but at the end of the day, it's about holding the physical and not so much about holding the stock. Would you rather go into the diversified miners as opposed to having a pure gold play? Um, well, the gold miners are still battling to make a little bit of money. Uh, Harmony's numbers were not great this week when they reported. Um, Goldfield's looking a little bit better. Uh, the diversified miners, I would prefer the diversified miners currently. And if you want to take gold, rather take uh, uh, ETF um, and go into the GLD, which is the, the gold index, and then go into diversified miners uh, such as Anglo and Billiton. Uh, well, just taking a look at some of the economic data out of the U.S. home builders' optimism hitting a one and a half year low. We know the construction industry in the U.S. still very much under pressure. Manufacturing uh, gauge growing slightly. So mixed economic data when it comes to the U.S. We had the CPI number out earlier this week showing slight uh, increase in inflation. Uh, we've got PPI out tomorrow uh, when it, or today in, in the U.S. So a lot of economic data that the U.S. has to start absorbing as well. How do you see that playing out, Rob? Well, I think one of the numbers today coming out is uh, housing start. It's a forward-looking number, so it shows you how many people are going to uh, start in new homes. So I think that will be a number that we're going to look at quite closely. Um, and that number you want to be growing, definitely. And it has, it's coming off a very, very low base, so you have to take that into account. But any negative number there, and uh, we'll start to see this bounce in the equity markets come off uh, quite considerably um, if those numbers are weak. Uh, PPI, we need some inflation on the PPI numbers out of the States, just showing that there is some inflationary pressure coming through, which will be quite positive. Um, Home Depot just came out with numbers. They managed to reach targets, but their forward-looking number is quite poor, and they say they only expect growth of about 2.6% and they're looking at 3.5%. Um, this next number coming out is Walmart later today. And so those are, those are two very big companies in the States that have reported uh, Home Depot coming out now and then Walmart. If Walmart's positive, um, it needs to be positive. It shows you that that retailer in, the, in America is slowly recovering from, from a very low base as well. So a lot of numbers and earnings really looking uh, is going to drive the market in the next day or two. What do you make of the news uh, that China has officially taken over Japan as the world's second largest economy Japan uh, valued at around 1.28 trillion dollars China at 1.3 trillion dollars do you think it was sort of an inevitable uh, turn of events 
Well, as uh, long as uh, Japan is stuck in a deflationary uh, uh, period as it is now, and it has been for many years, it's difficult for it to start growing. And uh, China was always going to catch it. So I think that's going to happen. Uh, and they'll stay ahead as, uh, unless the, t the yen can weaken and they can get some growth coming out of Japan. Otherwise, China will carry on being number two and will eventually get up to that number one spot. Rob, a lot of rebalancing going on when it comes to trade and also when it comes to who's the biggest economy, the second largest economy. But also looking at rebalancing your portfolio at such uncertain times. Do you think that perhaps we've ruled out the possibility of a double dip scenario playing out? I think so. Mark Mobius was uh, saying now that he doesn't expect um, a double dip scenario, especially in the emerging markets. Um, that doesn't mean to say that there will be slow growth. So there definitely could be slow growth. But a double dip uh, recession obviously means that you need two quarters of negative GDP growth. And I think that uh, you know the America is growing at a, at a, at a rate uh, of one percent. The UK was at two and a half percent. So a double dip recovery, a uh, double dip uh, recession, is not looking that likely at the moment. But that doesn't mean to say that growth is going to be slow and low. Retail sales in, out in South Africa in tomorrow's session, pretty much priced in. We are starting to see the South African consumer recovering. We know that it could take off from here onwards. We know that we've seen a World Cup effect, and that is set to continue for the next couple of readings. Your view? Yes, I think the numbers will be a little bit more positive, but you've got to take into account how much of that was uh, foreign buying that came in during the World Cup. Uh, so we'll take a look at those numbers. But uh, the, the indebtedness in South Africa is still very high. And uh, the South African consumer is starting to save again, which it hasn't done for, for many decades. So uh, the consumer is changing slightly and more saving coming into the environment. So retail sales, I think, will be slightly up, but uh, uh, nothing, nothing uh, very aggressive to the upside. Just looking at the volumes picture here in South Africa, we've seen relatively low volumes over the last couple of days and globally as well. Do you see that picking up in today's session? Um, it's slightly better than it was yesterday, but still relatively low levels. I think this trading range that we've been in of between 26,000 and 23,000, we didn't quite get to the bottom of this range uh, this time around in the sell-off that we had last week. Uh, so the buying that's coming is uh, very muted, um, but it's looking slightly better today. And uh, we'll see if the numbers in the States are conducive to, uh, to, to uh, a market moving up. Maybe we'll see some more volume coming in Wednesday and Thursday.